told you, if you splinter on me again, I'll cut ya. Hi, I'm Will, and you may know me as the creative genius behind the YouTube channel WH Creations. So, how do I define myself? I mean, am I a maker, a creator, an artist, an entrepreneur, a really nice guy? <laughs> Who am I kidding? I'm none of those things. I am a bodger. Now, using the Oxford Junior Dictionary, a bodger is described as a lord appendage? Ah, oh, do you know what? I was looking at Todger. <laughs> so in actual fact, I actually come from a long line of bodgers. I mean, my dad's a bodger, his dad was a bodger, even my great, 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 great granddad. He was a bodger as well. I mean, he did start out as a baker in 1666. He had his own shop, in fact, up in London. But um, something happened to it. I don't know, like he, he, he burnt his hand or something like that. So the last big project that you'll see over on my YouTube channel has got to be the industrial shelving that I made for my son's bedroom. Now this thing is so robust and hard wearing. I mean, I use scaffolding planks, uh, scaffolding pipes. I really matched the metal and the wood and just created something really, really cool. And it really sets the mood in their bedroom because they were going for that Marvel theme. So industrial sort of espionage sort of thing. And as well, it's got to be practical because at the end of the day, they're eight and three. So they're gonna use it as a climbing frame. But over Christmas, I have been overindulging and I've purchased a, uh, shh, don't tell the wife, a 3D printer. Yeah, I've been toying around with it and uh, this was my first ever project. I mean, it's meant to be a pen blank, but it's too small, it's out of scale, it's, um, well, it's, it's rubbish. But as I always like to say, we're learning. So when it comes to my favourite tool, I feel a countdown coming on. In number five, they may say that the pen is mightier than the sword, but there ain't no way I'm going into a zombie apocalypse with a fancy slimline. What I like to use is a pencil. 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 That's a marker. Mate, you have one job. <laughs> Don't make me cut you as well. <laughs> in number four, what it lacks in dust collection really makes up for in power and usage. It's the table saw. In number three, it's two and a half horses crammed into a little plastic box. It'll cut your dados, your rabbits, and your mouldings. It's a router. In at number two. <laughs> <laughs> Number two. Everybody loves a poo joke and a hand tool, and I am no exception when it comes to my Stanley 220A mini block plane. And in at number one is this the singly worst and best tool in this whole workshop my bandsaw. I'll tell you why every time that I go to use this machine takes so long to set up. Every time that I go put a new blade on it, set it up for a new cut, I seem to have to adjust absolutely everything on this machine. Can you tell the veins are popping out in my neck? It drives me nuts. I mean, if this bandsaw was a person, I'd be punching it right in the throat right now. Seriously, this thing winds me up so much, but I love it. It's got to be one of the most versatile, best pieces of go-to tools in this workshop. Purely for the fact that when it works, when it's all set up, it's running nicely. Oh my God. Seriously, it gives me chills. 
This thing will eat through a tree. It is that good. I need to go and sit down. I'll just... So my favorite project. Now for this, I'm gonna have to take you back at least 15 or 16 years when I was at least um, uh, about this height and, and a lot thinner. Um, I was out with my brother actually out in Australia and he had a small swimming pool on his land. Now this swimming pool had a really old rickety wooden fence. The thing was falling down, it was an absolute death hazard, it really was. So we had some people come in and they put up a proper fence and all the wood that came from the fence was dumped into a, a massive pole in the, in the car garage. Now, as I was saying, I was only about 17, 18 at the time, so I didn't really have much money or anything to get me around. So my brother came up with the idea of making things or furniture for around the house. Now, he had a massive library of magazines, anything from American Woodworker, if you still remember that magazine, um, and a load of different other woodworking paraphernalia. So I was left during the day to flick through them, see what I liked, and I came up with a design of a table, a side table for his laptop. Now this was gonna be the first ever project that I'd really ever made, and it was gonna incorporate a lot of new techniques that I'd never even seen or done before. One of them being uh, dovetails. So throughout the course of probably about a week, I was pulling out the best pieces of the wood and putting them through all the machinery and I came up with this absolutely amazing piece of furniture that still to this day I, I just look at it and go God, I, I had absolutely no skill I didn't know what I was doing and I just got on with it I done all my research I really put my heart into it and I created something that I was really proud of and to be honest I still do that with every single thing that I make and it just gives me a real passion and a real spark, if you like, to move on. I can just put it in a, in a room or I can give it away as a present. And each time I look at it, I'll just go, yeah, I'm happy with that. I made that. I mean, it's not like my decorating that I walk into a room and go, yeah, bodge that one up again. But hey, if you don't try, you'll never learn. So there's a new saying for you. Dare to try for men. The new skill that I want to try and learn. I mean, there is so many things that I just don't know anything about and I want to learn. I'm the sort of person, I'm like a sponge in many ways and I want to try and learn everything that I can. If I can't get it, then I go away and I'll research and I'm... Uh, I keep telling my kids this, if they can't pick it up straight away, they've got to keep trying. And that's exactly the same as me. If I don't know something, I'll go away, I'll research it, I'll read up about it, I'll watch YouTube videos, I'll, I'll buy magazines and anything else that I can just absorb the knowledge. But there is one thing that stands out above everything else, and that has to got to be blacksmithing. Simple. Who does not watch Forged in Fire I want to make a knife. We all use them. If we're going to be going camping, if we're going to be cutting up that leg of lamb. Ooh, leg of lamb. Yeah, I'm hungry now. As you can tell. But come on. Who doesn't want to get a piece of metal, put it in a fire, and start whacking on it with a hammer? I've made my point. No more to say. Blacksmithing, knife making, no black, blacksmith, black, no, knife making, black knife smith making, smith making black knifing, yeah, yeah, new skill right there, I said it first, what did I say, knife, knife blacksmithing, yeah, one of them, that's what I want to learn, if I don't get it straight away, I'm going to smash the place up. So I'd just like to say a huge thank you to Gil for inviting me to be a part of Makers Monday and I hope you've really enjoyed watching me as much as I've enjoyed putting this thing together. Now if you'd like to see more of what I do then please go over and check out my YouTube channel 
because at the end of the day, we're learning.